Welcome to Rowan College of South Jersey's English as a Second Language International Culture event. I'm Josh Piddington, RCSJ's Vice President and Chief Information Officer, and it's my pleasure to host today's wonderful event. You might be wondering, how do I ask a question? Our goal is to make this as easy as possible, so please look for the chat button. Click or tap that button to send us your questions, and at the end of the event, if you have time, we'll ask those questions. Also, please note we are recording the webinar and we'll make it available in the next couple of days. It's now my pleasure to introduce Joseph Spencer. He's the director of the Adult Basic Education Program at the college, where he focuses on high school equivalency program and English as a second language program. Joe, thanks so much for being here today. Uh, thank you, Josh. Um, I wanna first start off by thanking Dr. Keating, Dr. Rickards, Dr. Hall, and the entire advisory group from Rowan College of South Jersey for their hard work and dedication to the college community and their support for our programs. I also want to thank Josh Piddington and his entire team for their help with today's event. I'd also like to recognize the New Jersey Division of Labor as well as the Gloucester County Workforce Development Board. Their grant funding makes it possible for us and our adult education programs that we provide our students and we thank them for their continued support. I'd also like to thank our ESL instructors for their hard work and dedication to their students. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Our Dean Bridget Satchel for her continued support for our programs. And thank you to the students for participating in today's event and our program. Uh, I would like to introduce our first presenter today. Our name is Chung Ying Wei. Mm. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Chen Wei. Uh, I'm from China. Uh, I moved, moved to U.S. for 13 years. Uh, I was a teacher in China. Now uh, I live in Washington Township, New Jersey. And uh, I have two spas in the township. Uh, one is seven years. Uh, another one, the second location is one year. Uh, and uh, also when, when four times in a row for the best spa in the Washington Township. Um, I'm, I'm very uh, proud of all my um, employees and uh, my spa. And uh, uh, today uh, I'm going to play a traditional music instrument. The name uh, is called Wu uh, Zheng. Uh, the first, uh, I will play two. The first one, uh, first the song the name is Jasmine. Uh, it is uh, about to tell us how pretty the Jasmine it is. And then the second one uh, is, uh, is the theme song of a Chinese movie. Uh, okay, uh, let's start uh, play the Guzheng now. Okay. 
Chung, what would you like to do next? Would you like to move forward in the slide and, and, and talk about your slides? Or do you have some more music you'd like to play? Or are you, are you done, Chung? Yeah, I'm done. Oh, all right, very good. Uh, so Chung, thanks so much. The, the music was absolutely beautiful. Thank you for playing with us. Quick question for you before we talk with another student. When did you move to the United States? Uh, I, moved, I moved to the US in the first 13 years. Wow. I have been here for 13 years. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, it's now my uh, pleasure to introduce Elizabeth Diaz. Elizabeth? Yes. Please uh, talk to us about uh, your slides and this program. Oh, okay. Um, I am Elizabeth. I'm from Brazil. My first time in the US was in 2008 in Florida. I stood there for two years. And now I'm live in Switzerland for three years. I started to study English this year. And I hope you enjoy my video. And, and go ahead. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Elizabeth, I'm from Brazil, I'm here to introduce to you the best dessert of Brazil called Brigadeiro. Brigadeiro has in a lot of parties in Brazil, in birthday parties, big shower, wedding parties, has Brigadeiro. It's the taste delicious. Hello? There we go to know how we make brigadeiro. It's very easy, simple, easy. One can of milk condensed. Two tablespoons of chocolate pound. This is a sweetie chocolate pound, okay? I put one tablespoon of 100% chocolate powder because I don't like too much sweetie. One tablespoon of butter. Percent chocolate powder because I don't like too much sweetie. One tablespoon of butter. Sprinkles. And mold. Mold looks like the cupcake, but the little one. There we go. Now you put everything in a pan. Look. And you mix and go to the fire and to the dish from the bottom of the pan. Try to leave the medium a low heat too, please. 
you need to mix all the time, okay? Pay attention. Look. When it starts to come off the bottom, it's time to put out of the fire, okay? It's, look. This is ready. Oh, delicious. The next step, we put everything in the plate and we can let it cool. And after, we put in the refrigerator about four hours. Now, the, the second step is make the sweetie. I have a tip. If you leave your hands cold, look. The brigadeiro doesn't stick in your hands, okay? You can use a sprinkle chocolate, chocolate sprinkle, sorry, and grating chocolate. Look, my daughter grating this chocolate, it's very good too, okay? It's really easy to roll it. Look. Okay, pay attention. Look. When it starts to come off the bottom, it's time to put out of the fire, okay? It's, look. This is ready. Oh, delicious. The next step, we put everything in the plate and we can let it cool. And after, we put in the refrigerator about four hours. Now, the, the second step is make the sweetie. I have a tip. If you leave your hands cold, look. The brigadeiro doesn't stick in your hands, okay? You can use a sprinkle chocolate, chocolate sprinkle, sorry, and grating chocolate. Look, my daughter grating this chocolate, it's very good too, okay? It's really easy to roll it. Look. Hi everybody, I have two little people, little people, help me in the kitchen, huh? Kevin and Julie, they help me a lot to eat everything. <laughs> I will eat it all. <laughs> it's a boy. That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is your too, Kevin. Yes. Who? 
is going to eat everything. Who, who, who? Me. You, Kevin. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. Are you Judy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are mine. Nice. Why? Why? That's okay. Yes. To eat brigadeiro. One way is this. And another way, you can mix only in this time. Look, no too much. Look. And we can put on top of the cake. This is the carrot cake, but you can put in the chocolate cake, vanilla cake, it's delicious. Elizabeth, that was just wonderful, and, and I must say I'm hungry now. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so my, my question for you is, uh, what is your favorite thing about learning English? Mm, when I realize that I am, that I learning and use it in my daily life. And in small talk, when I talk with my neighbor, um, I feel like everything is paying off my effort. That is great. Yeah. Um, really, just absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. It's now my, uh, my pleasure to introduce Celine Hayo. Uh, Celine? Hi. Um, my name is Celine Arroyo. I am from Brazil. I live in Swedish one fact about my life, when I was in high school in Brazil, I have the English class, but I don't learn a lot because I used to say, I never ever will go to the United States. Why I need learning English? And now I am here for three years and seven months and learning English in these programs and I love and I learned one thing, never say never. Hi everyone, my name is Silene. I am from Brazil. Our guests today are these two American ladies, Krista and Alexia. And we are going to ask them some questions about Brazil. Are you girls ready to answer? Yes. Um, what is the capital of Brazil? Rio de Janeiro. It's Brazilian. Uh, what name uh, do they give it to who is born in Brazil? Uh, what name who born in Brazil have? Who born in Brazil is? <laughs> is Brazilian. Uh, what language do they speak? Portuguese. Okay. Yeah. What do you know about Brazil? <laughs> um, I know it's the largest country in South America. Yes. Um, I also know that uh, it's like the fifth world's largest population. Yes. Both in land and population. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, have you ever tried a Brazilian food? What did you think about it? Yeah, you you know the name of your food? You no, know? it's from her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've tried um, stuff from like Brazilian steakhouse. Um, one thing you think is cool, and one thing you think is weird about Brazil, uh, Brazil or Brazil. I think like the language is cool. Yeah. 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 Something we we. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think the. People are really cool in Brazil. I mean, they're awesome. Um, uh, strange guys. <laughs> Maybe they're like they drive on the right side of the road, right? On the same. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the same side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know uh, anyone from Brazil? What is your relationship with them? Um, I have a stepmom from Brazil. Yeah. I know you guys. <laughs> yeah. What is the relationship? It's good. Um, Friend. yeah, we're um we're really close. Um. She lived with my dad in uh, Florida with my um, uh, stepmom's parents that are from Brazil. I visit them almost all the time down there. You really something words in Portuguese? <laughs> um, I just know Spanish words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Maybe something words in Brazil. You need to start with us. Um, thank you, girls, for your helping. Um, I really appreciate this. was a great video. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. So quick question before we, we uh, move to another student. What is your goal for learning English through this program? Uh, my goal is to be able to communicate with others and to take a professional course and get a good job. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Thank it's now my pleasure to introduce Tusha Mustafa. Tusha. Hi everyone, I am Tuche Mustafa. I am from Turkey. I moved to the US in January. Uh, I have been living in Marlton. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, Turkish food. We can start a presentation. Yeah, uh, Turkey uh, is in the middle of uh, Middle East, Europe, and Asia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in Turkey, has too many dishes. Today, I would like to tell you about some street food and uh, home cooking. Next. Uh, light uh, kebab uh, Turkish food when it comes to people's minds usually comes kebab every city in Turkey offers kebab in different ways it is made of sliced meat or shish meat uh, with yogurt bread tomatoes hot peppers and some other green vegetables next slide uh, lahmacun it is like pizza but it has completely different taste. It is though is very thinner than pizza. It is made in ground beef and vegetables. Lamajun is my favorite Turkish food. It is spicy taste. 
next slide. Çiğ köfte. It is made in ground meat, fine bulgur. It is called raw meatball because a person who does it cooks with the heat of his her hands. It has a very long kneading time, but it is so delicious. Next slide. Uh, pide. pide is a traditional meal that comes from the Black Sea coast of Turkey and feels like a sort of cousin to the Italian pizza or Middle Eastern flatbread. A very simple crust is the base and rather than rolling into a circle, it is formed into an oblong that is often rolled on the side so it looks a bit like a boat in shape. Next slide. Chai simit uh, or simit iron. Uh, simit is a tip of Turkish bread mostly eaten as a breakfast food. We pair it with a cup of Turkish tea for breakfast and with the yogurt drink named iron for lunch. This is the best breakfast for many working people and students in Turkey. They mostly buy smit and cheese together either on the way to work or school or at their workplace or school. Next slide. Uh, Künefe and baklava, both of them are very delicious dessert. I wish I had to a chance to offer them to you to taste. Künefe is one of the heavenly Turkish dessert made with, made with sure syrup. It is mostly served at kebab restaurants after the main course. It is made with cheese and shredded kadayıf noodles soaked in sweet syrup. It has a very balanced combination of cheese and sugar. Baklava is a sweet dessert made of 40 layers of flaky phyllo pastry filled with crushed nuts, mostly walnut and or pichato, and sweetened with honey syrup. Next slide. Uh, now uh, I want to talk about home cooking. First uh, meal is manta. The manta dough is made of water, flour, and salt. The thinner the dough and the smaller the bread pieces are, the more masterful is the cook. The filling contains grounded beef or lamb, onion, salt, and pepper. Although the ingredients are simple, making manta the correct way is, the, is a tedious job. The laborious process is to make thin sheets of dough, cut them into squares of one or one uh, and a half centimeters, and of course, put the kneaded filling in the center and wrap the dough in small bundles. The legend goes that if a spoonful of mant contains less than 40 pieces, then the single girl who makes the dish is not is not good. Next slide. Kapama. Many Turkish people in Turkey do not know kapama because it is mostly made by Turkish people from Bulgaria. It is prepared of tips of meat, chicken, lamb or veal. Also it is added some vegetables like tomato, green peas, uh, sweet copia pepper if you want. The meats are cooked in the oven with rice or bulgur. Next slide. Uh, yaprak sarma is a traditional dish in Turkey that is typically grape vine leaves rolled and filled with mince meat. Uh, this vegan version has a rice filling that is Season it well with lemon, fresh parsley, paprika, mint, pepper paste, and onion. Filling and rolling the vine leaves is a bit time consuming, but you will end up with an enormous amount of yaprak sarma that you can eat from four days. Next slide. 
Subari, uh, Subari is a variety of Turkish barrack that has a reputation of being one of the most difficult barracks to prepare. It is traditionally filled with cheese and parsley. The name of this barrack may sound weird. The filo dough is boiled in water. That's why it's called Subari. Next slide. Hünkar Beyendi uh, Sultan's Delight is a Turkish dish consisting of a flavorful lamb stew that is served on top of a creamy roasted eggplant pure. The pure is often thickened with milk and cheese, while the whole dish is sometimes topped with a tomato-based sauce or garnish with freshly chopped parsley. It is believed that the dish is native to Istanbul and was first prepared for the wife of Napoleon III in the late 19th century. Next slide. Kasır, fine bulgur salad, which is called kasır in Turkish, in the favorite food of all Turkish women. It is like a must to make this salad when you invite your female friends. There are some veggies you must add into bulgur salad. These are cucumber, parsley, green onion, onion. If you want to add other green vegetables such as lettuce or dill, you can add. All the Turkish bulgur salad doesn't need anything else. I love it with pickles, fresh peppers and tomatoes on the side. It becomes like a wonderful face this way. Next slide. Breakfast, uh, it is a really unique start today with a lineup of tastes all its own for t Turkish people. The breakfast is not just a necessity, it is a traditional family gathering. A classic Turkish breakfast consists of fresh cheese like feta and kashkaval, black and green olives, fresh baked bread, fruit preserves, honey, sweet butter, and plant of breathed black tea served in Turkish tea glasses. Next slide. More elaborate selections are offered such as hard boiled eggs, a single egg sunny side up cook with sujuk and served in a tiny copper skillet called a sahan as well as omelets chunks of sesame based helva, cut and peeled tomatoes, cucumber, sweet peppers, and variation of homemade filo dough and <clears throat> cheese pastry called barek. Another great breakfast classic with eggs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, another great breakfast uh, classic with eggs is called menemen. Menemen is a juicy, spicy version of scrambled eggs with onions, red and green peppers and tomatoes. Thank you for your, your listening. <laughs> well, that was a delicious presentation. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, no, thank you. Tushy, how many years have you studied English now? Uh, everyone starts from fourth grade to learn uh, English in Turkey and continues until the final year of high school. Also, when I started university, uh, English lessons had to be attended for one year before starting vocational classes at university. That's well, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank right, you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Judy Wu. Yes. Please take it away. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Judy Wu. Uh, Chinese name is Wu Yu Zhu. I came from Republic of China. Uh, Republic of China is established in 1911. Then migrate to Taiwan, 1949. I'm introduced about my country and my uh, painting. Chinese painting is my favorite painting. Okay, next. 
Next, please. Uh, this is my watercolor painting just uh, selected in International World Watercolor Competition. Thank you. Next one. Okay, next one. And uh, I lived in Taiwan, Taipei City. Uh, the year 2014 moved to USA and study English in this year, January. Next. My country's language official is Mandarin, uh, means Chinese. And other locality language is Hokkien and Hakka. I also can speak very fluently. Next one. Our national day is October 10th. We call double 10th day, but we all use Luna Festival to celebrate four of important uh, days. First one is Lunar New Year, means Spring Festival. After the Spring Festival, first full moon is Lantern Festival. We have big lantern show. The third one, Dragon Ball Festival, May of May. And uh, we eat rice dumpling, and uh, have Dragon Ball race. The fourth one is Autumn Festival, uh, August 15, also full moon. Then we eat moon cake, the shape like full moon. Next. Next, please. Okay, I want to introduce some of the Chinese painting. Chinese culture has been more than 5,000 years and there's more than 2,000 years of ink painting. The ink painting is representative of Chinese painting. Uh, and the spread others is Asian country since Han and Tang dynasty, especially Japan and Korean and some of Asian country. The basic only have black and white. In this time, we have more colorful ink. In the early time, we just use brush to paint it. But right now, some of the artists use their finger to paint it, but not too often. Next. Chinese painting have three of more important subjects. One technique, the ink color divide by level. On the brush also have different, like flag, wrong, staying strong, and uh, uh, change. Themes including the landscape, cherry curtain. Birds and flower, flower and birds, custom, religions, and the men. The skill, fine brush work, and the freehand line drawing, brush. The tour also very important. First one, brushes. The brushes are made handmade with natural animal like a rabbit, goat, pig, horse, or chicken, pheasant. Next one. Second one, paper. These are used special bag only in China for paper, for made paper, including cotton, lina, and the silk, some of can customize the size or different kind of the paper. Different kind of the painting use different kind of paper. Next. The ink, traditional ink stick must be 
made of natural materials, such as hong yu, pine smoke, cowhide, glue, ox bell, and different herbs, more than 20 kinds of the material together. It makes one to two years can complete. But right now, we use the liquid ink instead. Next. The ink stick must use grinder with an ink stone, it means slab. This ink stone also good quality, different kind of stone and uh, should be stored for a long time. Thank you. Next one. When you completed your painting, you sign your name and the stamp your own seal on your painting. The style of the seal were very, very different shape. And uh, sometimes wrong, sometimes square, sometimes other, uh, other shape. The seal by many kinds of stone can be uh, another kind of the artist also store show for a long time. Next. All pigments are made entire minerals and sheer powder, plants, juice, and animal glue. In a modern time, we all use quickly one factory. Some of the artists right now use post color or uh, watercolor to instead. Next. Here are some of my painting to uh, introduce to you. Uh, you can see just now I introduced one all on my painting. Okay, next. Here also landscape one. Next. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Judy. Uh, you are an amazing artist. I myself can only draw stick figures, so I'm very, very impressed. Thank you. So let me ask you, how difficult was it for you to learn English? First one, maybe I think uh, we have, I have to change to my mother language now, uh, before. But right now, I think, uh, try my best, do every time, everywhere. Sometimes when I work in at the role or I watch in a TV or everything, I change to uh, translation to English. I have to translation to English. So right now, I think if you try your best to do every day, do a reading, everything, I think not very difficult for me, for everyone, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's probably a testament to your instructors in the program as well. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce Tam Yuan. Tam, please. May I introduce you? Um, may I introduce you my, <coughs> myself? My name is Tam Nguyen. Full name is Tam Tam Nguyen. I'm 54 years old. I'm come from Vietnam. Uh, I live in Woodbury High, New Jersey. Uh, I came, I, I, I have a camp, I have a dead camp here for five months. Uh, I came here with my wife. My wife is a pharmacy technician. She is, lead, uh, she is working in Philadelphia. My son is a uh, 20 years old. Uh, he is studying in the Gateway High School in New Jersey. I graduated from University in Vietnam, 29 years old. I work as doctor in Vietnam, 
in cardiology and ultrasound. After liver here in five months, I like it. But at now, uh, pollution, um, the weather, the neighborhood, and the uh, um, cetera. Today in uh, webinar, Zoom webinar, in lead at a second language international contact, I introduce to you how to make a traditional Vietnam non la Because I haven't soon to make non la here, so I, uh, I saw the video how to make the non la Beside, beside non la and our yai, the symbol of Vietnamese, non la is also in my view. When you come to Vietnam, you can see younger and women wear non la and ao yai. To make non la, we need young sun farm leaf, conical frame, leaf, and trigger. Uh, how to do make the traditional Vietnamese non la? Non la is symbol of Vietnamese people. They wear this head to shield and protect the ultraviolet spray from the sun and the rain every day. Under the skillful hand of the woman have a talent for detail, they will make a nice head. The first step, pick up the young sun palm leaves in the forest, bring them home. Then cut the star and dry them under the sun in a few days. This step is very important in deciding whether to have a white leaf or not. The iron the sun leaf with a small metal block over with a thin flow on the pan. You can buy them at the palm market if you don't have the time to prepare leaf. A conical frame made of wood with circle from small or large to large. The cycle are made of elaborated bamboo stick. The coat of iron some palm lever on frame into layer. They need the unit and tool to seal this lever from top to bottom in a cycle shape. They may appear when it, when they finish. They can decorate this bell with many colors. They can buy the traditional Vietnam non la in farm market or uh, in a store when you travel to Vietnam. It's price very cheap. It is approximate to dollar for each one. Please come to Vietnam and admire the beauty of my homeland. Please so mm, the how to make the traditional Vietnam non la in your tip. Yes. It's fun. Thank you. The first step, pick up the sun, sun palm leaf in forest, run them home, and cut the straw, straw and dry them under the sun in the few days. This step is very important in deciding whether to have a white leaf or no. And they stress and separate the leaf. The iron sun palm leaf in with a small metal block cover with a tin glow on the pan. We need a conical frame made of wood. And a conic frame made of wood which cycle from small to large. The cycle are made of elaborated bamboo stick. And then they cover the iron sun palm leaf on the prime into layer. Then 
the units and tool to shield the lever from top to bottom in a cycle set. Under the school hand of the woman have a talent up for detail, they will make a nice head. They make a bell when they finish. They can decorate a big bell with many colors. It's very cheap. Only two dollars for each one. Please come to Vietnam and admire the beauty of my homeland. The Phoenix. Thank you, teacher. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Tam. Uh, so question, when did you move to the United States? Um, I, came, I came here, um, I came here five months ago with my wife and my son in immigrant program. Oh, that, that's amazing. Thank you so much for, for being here today. Really appreciate it. Thank it's you. now my pleasure to introduce Esther Lopez and Veronica Menendez. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Esther. I'm from Mexico. And I, today I want to talk about a uh, dish, but uh, traditional food. Hi, my name, my name is Esther. I'm from Oaxaca, Mexico. Today I'm going to talk about tlayudas. Tlayudas are traditional dish, the original from Oaxaca, Mexico. Tlayudas, they're similar to tortillas, but large. And you have to hear the tlayudas and then on black bean, um, a string cheese from Oaxaca, and beef, and pork meat, and chorizo Mexican, and lettuce, tomatoes, and avocados. This is the Tlayudas. Hi, I am Veronica. I am from Mexico. Today I'm going to show how to make agua de horchata. The agua de horchata is a traditional Mexican drink that is made from rice, water, cinnamon, sugar, vanilla extract, and we are putting all the ingredients in the blender. And it's ready to drink. All right, thank you so much. So Esther, I have a question for you. How many years have you studied English? Uh, I studied English uh, is my first time. Really? That's awesome. And, and Veronica, here's a question for you. When did you move to the United States? I moved since uh, 2005 and I live uh, in Pennsylvania for one year and my next stay is in New Jersey. I live now in Glassboro. That's wonderful. How have you liked the program? I like um, learning English because I understand all conversation and reading. And it's difficult to use translation English at Spanish. The, Spani the English at Spanish is confusing sometimes. Well, I, I think you're doing great. Thank you so much for being here today. 
Director Spencer, please introduce the wonderful instructors who make the English as a Second Language program possible. Absolutely, Josh, it would be my pleasure. Um, I want to first introduce our instructor, uh, Nancy Nolan. Hi. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. I have wonderful students. It makes my life happy and I love my job. Thank you very much, Nancy. I'd also like to introduce Christina Cullen. Hi everyone and thank you Joseph and thank you Josh and everyone and also I want to say great job to all of the students today you did amazing and we're so thankful that you shared about your cultures today. Thank you so much Christina excellent work. I'd also like to introduce Kimberly Gonzalez Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everybody, for putting this on. It was great. I loved watching that. And the students did fantastic. Thank you, Kim. Um, and also, uh, Maggie Silva, uh, she was unable to be with us today. Uh, but we thank all of our ESL instructors uh, for their continued hard work during this difficult uh, time during the pandemic. And I, I have to say they've done an amazing job. And our students did an amazing job today. And I wanna thank them for all the time and effort that they put into their presentations and telling us about their countries and their cultures. Uh, I could say that I, I learned a great deal today and uh, I appreciate them uh, for their time. And I appreciate all of you for joining us and uh, giving us your time uh, on this day. Thank you. Joe, so just a few quick questions about these programs. So when does the next semester begin and how much does it cost to attend either the English as a Second Language program or the high school equivalency program? Great question, Josh. Our next semester uh, will be for the winter semester, starts on January 19th, uh, 2021. And uh, students should register online by January 14th uh, in order to have a seat for that semester. And uh, the cost of the program, uh, is at no cost for the students uh, because our, our funding is provided by the New Jersey Division of Labor and the Gloucester County Workforce Development. That's, that's wonderful news. Um, and so I guess a follow-up question would be, how can someone enroll in the online programs and what do they need in order to participate in the online classes? Okay. So in, in order to enroll in our online programs, uh, we have a editable link on our adult education program website. Uh, and that information is gonna be shared with all participants today uh, following this event. So uh, please look out for that link and information to our site. And uh, in order to participate in our online programs, uh, it is preferred that students uh, use a laptop, desktop or a tablet of some sort. Um, However, we do have a lot of students that are relying on using their smartphones as well. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time today, uh, Director Spencer. Remember everyone, uh, within the coming days, you're gonna get an email from, from Joe Spencer right here with a link to the video for, of uh, today's recording, as well as additional information about the program and the college. So please be on the lookout for that. I want to thank you all for attending today's event. I hope you found it as, a, as a, a, a inspiring as I did. Um, Brown College of South Jersey's Guiding Light really is student success. It's something that Dr. Keating, our president, talks about all the time. And I saw myself nothing but student success here today. You know, imagine being asked to give a presentation in a language that isn't your native language. Um, just phenomenal job to all the students. Thank you for your time today. Thank you uh, everyone for attending and please be safe. Thank you.